Let's go live now to the independent member for Goldstein, Zoe Daniel. Zoe Daniel, thanks for your time. Uh, some serious uh, issues I want to talk to you about in the, on the mental health front in a moment. But let me ask you, on the big news out of Canberra today, the change on superannuation, uh, the concessional rate for those with balances upwards of $3 million to have their concession concessional tax rate reduced from uh, 15%, or increased, I should say, to 30%. What's your reaction? Well, I'm interested to have a conversation with the Treasurer directly about it, Kieran. But on the face of it, if this is something that wouldn't come in until after the next election, so it gives the Australian people an opportunity to digest and decide on whether they think this is palatable, and also that it's not retrospective, so therefore doesn't affect people who already have money in the system on the basis that we need to raise more revenue and close a loophole that super was never been designed for. I'm, I'm pleased to see that the government has moved in that direction after it's kite flying earlier in the week. But again, I haven't had the direct conversation with the Treasurer. I've done as much as you have, uh, which is watch a press yeah. conference, try to understand what's going on. Yep. No, fair enough. Uh, understood. And I, uh, I did want to speak to you, though, and that's the reason I got you on to talk about this really concerning issue off the back of the pandemic. Uh, the great Australian, Pat McGorry, calls it the shadow pandemic. It's about eating disorders, mental ill health among young Australians, and you're seeing it firsthand, aren't you, in Melbourne, Zoe Daniel? What do you want governments to do? Well, do you know what? I really want state and federal governments to get together and come up with a solution that will deliver better care and treatment options for young people who are affected by eating disorders. This is something that became um, very prominent for me very soon after the election last year when a mum walked into my office here in Goldstein and told me about the situation with her daughter, the revolving door of hospital admissions and refeeding, uh, the fact that eating disorders are being treated as a, a physical illness, not a mental illness, um, that children are being traumatised by the way the system is set up, that there's no coordination between the different arms of the medical profession to support their recovery. And since then, I've spoken to dozens of families in my electorate and from across the country who are struggling with this. And Kieran, I think you and I both know that if you ask around people that you know, everyone will know someone or a family that is struggling with this. Uh, so it's kind of a hidden pandemic, but it doesn't take much to bring it to the surface when you start asking friends, family and colleagues uh, whether they know of people within their community yeah. who are struggling with this issue. And it's spiked. This is, this is the thing, and, and I guess the governments have to take ownership for not just it's the right thing to do, but it's it spiked off the back of the pandemic because of the huge toll on young Australians having their normal socialising and other life, the daily lives that you and I took for granted at that age, they had to put it to one side and it had a massive impact. Yeah, look, I live in Melbourne. Uh, I experienced those lockdowns. My teenage children and their friends all experienced those lockdowns where they were on Zoom school all day and on their devices most of the rest of the day other than the one hour that they were allowed to go out for a run or to kick a football or, or a soccer ball or ride a bicycle. Lots of young people went down the abyss of influences and expectations on social media during that time. They experienced social isolation and, and loneliness. And unfortunately for many of them, it's resulted in them um, developing eating disorders. And you have, you know, a 100% increase of presentations to major hospitals of kids with eating disorders and only 40 something beds in the whole country that are dedicated to eating disorders. And this collapses families. You know, you take your child to hospital, they're put into emergency when they're almost dead. They are refed through a tube, held down by security guards to be fed, then released back home. They're so traumatised that they can't eat and then they end up back in hospital. And I know families whose yeah. kids have had 20, 30 admissions. You know, we have to do better.